meaning that David needs to go and fight for it for his uh, for Israel. And um, David's outside, and the men are outside, and as they're out busy doing, sometimes in life you're out busy doing other things. Many times we can't see and understand. I want you to, we're going to start reading this and, and we're going to go ahead and go through this and then we're going to make some things here and clarify some things. It says, now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag. On the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag attacked Ziglag, uh, uh, attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire, verse 2, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burnt with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and, and his people, and the people who were with him, lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever wept? When you have no more power to weep. Uh, I don't know if you've ever gone through something in your life. Whether they're small trials or big trials. Or if you create, you come to a place where there's no more. It's, it's like I cried it all out. It seems like everything that's in my life, I, I let it all out. And it seems like I'm empty inside. So David, this is how the story starts. This is David leaves out and he's out with the men and he doesn't really notice or pay attention that in his own home where his wife is, where his children are, where the men's wives are, um, they leave and the enemy comes in and starts attacking them and they take them for captive. They take them, everybody in the family in captive. They leave and they take them and David comes back to an empty house, an empty house. And here David starts crying out to God. It seems like David is, was trusting God for his family. He was trusting God for the sex. Remember, David is the beloved in this place. That's what his name represents. And he's coming back and he says, listen, how can this happen to me? You know, I'm serving you. I'm, I'm in the place in my life that I'm, I'm taking care of business in your honor and glory. I'm, I'm, I have a devotion with you. But somehow... I came back to an empty house. I came back to my wife maybe not being there or maybe your family all messed up. Have you ever been there before? Oh, amen. amen. I have. And it seems like, it seems like nobody could understand you in the midst of when you're weeping or crying. In the midst when your emotions start becoming, in a sense, to take a hold of you. In the middle of your trial. Really kind of the truth is that nobody could understand you. And in this place, David is really, really trying to keep himself together. And in verse 5, he comes out and he says, he says this, he says that David's two wives, uh, and Noah and, and the Jezreelites, uh, Abigail and the widows, verse of, they were been taken. Verse 6 says this, now David was greatly Distress. This word distress means that David was greatly emotional. In other words, he was very empowered by the fact that that trial really took a hold of him. And he said, man, I'm on ease. I'm distressed. I'm going through it. And nobody understands me. Have you ever been there? For the people spoke of stoning him. And now here his own crew starts turning on him and said, man, how is it? We're, we're here doing the work of God. We're here outside oh. living life. And, and I'm coming back and it seems by my own people, my own family, turn against me and want to stone me. Hey. Have you ever had problems at home? Hey. Oh, is there anybody in the house of God? Have you ever had problems outside your house? Hey. Where it seems like it, everything outside the house has came against you in the middle of your trial. It's like, I don't need more trials than what I already have. Have you ever been there before? It's like, man, you know that I'm going through, but in the middle of my going through, here comes so-and-so and starts coming with another trial. Or here comes this situation. Or here comes this situation. And David's in the midst of making a decision in his life. He says, listen. He says, he comes, he says, 
uh, he says, uh, spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. They were grieved every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Amen. You know, there's something about when you're in the midst of situations and it seems like everybody has turned against you. But here, David, there's one of the greatest, empowering, uh, most, uh, most powerful things that you could ever do. He, instead of getting offended about the people that are coming against him, the Bible says that David turns to the Lord. Man. And he comes and he turns to the Lord. He says, but David strengthened himself. He came to God and he says, listen. I'm not going to be able to get straight with nobody around me because everybody is upset with me because of the fact of the decision that I made to go out and leave our family back. But the truth is, here I am, God. Hmm. Here I am. I am in the midst of this situation and I'm coming to you and I'm turning to you to get strength from you. Man. One of the greatest powers that you could ever have in your life is that when everything's going wrong, point number one, Turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. Come on. Look at somebody and say, turn to the Lord. Draw your strength from the Lord. David's actually strength at the odds. He was weak in the midst of his faith, in the midst of his belief. He was weakened. He was in the midst of not understanding why was this happening. But God was setting him up for something great. Listen to me. When the enemy comes to attack you, Always remember that the enemy's attacking what God's already getting ready to do. There must something be greater, greater up ahead, and the enemy knows that, and he's trying to destroy you from you getting there. Right. Attacks don't come, trials don't come just to come. They come to mature your life, to build your life, and to take you to the next level of your life with God. See, in God's relationship, here David comes to God and he says, he strengthened himself to the Lord in verse 7. He comes and he says, he says, uh, then David said to Abithar, the, the priest, uh, Abimelech's uh, son, please bring the ephod, which is here to me. And Abithar brought the ephod. The ephod represented the sense of a relationship with God. And he says, bring me that what I need right now because I need to make some big decisions. When you are emotionally distressed, listen to me, point number two. Don't ever make decisions in the middle of your warfare in your life. Many people have a big problem with making decisions in the middle of their emotional, emotional life. Remember, bad emotions bring bad decisions. And when you have a bad emotion, it leads you to the wrong decision when you start regretting later on, maybe not now, later on, why did I make that decision? See, many people don't understand that the fact is, is that that here at this place, David is at a place trying to make a decision. But yet he's emotionally distressed. So he comes and gets a hold of God and he gets a hold of God and God comes and gives him the sense of the empowerment. And he comes and he asks God and a decision. He says, God, verse 8 and 9, he says, 8, he says, what is it that you want me to do? He says, so David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this this, this troop, should I go ahead and attack this situation? How do I go about this decision that I need to make? Have you ever been there before? Amen. Look at your neighbor, neighbor and tell him, it's okay to say amen. Okay. Amen. It's okay to say amen. We learned this Sunday what was amen. 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 What is amen? amen. What is amen? Believe. Believe. That's right. Every time you say amen, you're believing. Amen. amen. You're believing in what's going to be said in your life. It's okay. Look, come on, Eric. Come on, give the Lord time off for Brother Nick. I'll, I'll give you a Do you know the revival? You know the revival songs? You know the revival? Amen. Listen to me. Yeah. Well, that was a clap off for you. Let's go ahead and, 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 and get, get out of your mind. Get out of your mind. Come on. Shake it down. Shake it down. God's going to do something tonight. Man. Listen to me. Amen. When you are in the midst of your decision, when you are in the midst of your decision, when you are in the midst of your decision, when you are in the midst of your decision, when you are in the midst of your decision, when you are in the midst of your decision, when you are in the that you are in a place with God or else you're going to be overtaken by the enemy. Many people make decisions in the middle of their emotional life when they're distressed. They're, they're saying, what do, what do I do? And they don't know what to do, so they get distressed and, and they don't know what decision because their head is not on straight. They're not thinking right. They're not, they're not allowing themselves. So any voice they hear 
That's what's going to make them do what they're going to do. And it's very important that you don't just hear any voice, but you hear God's voice. How does God's voice come into you? It's called the Holy Spirit. Inside of you, you've got the power of the Holy Spirit that, that He starts speaking to you. He gives you a sense of something called peace. Everybody say peace. See, in John 16, 33, as we go, we're going to go back right now. But in John 16, 33, He says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Peace. You may have, peace. you may have, peace. you may have, peace. you may have. Peace. So look at somebody, tell them peace to you. Peace to you, peace to you. And then he says, in the world you will have tribulation. That word world means the negative emotions of everything that's against God is going to come to try to stir you to follow the tribulation. Then my peace will pull you out of your tribulation, take you into the next step of your life. Amen. Amen. So point number three, always make sure that if you're going to make a decision, you have peace. You have peace. Come on. You have peace. There has to be the peace of God. Can you give me an amen? The peace of God is what moves you to lead you, to direct you, to guide you to, to the place to the right decision. Here he says, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. This peace, this word peace means shalom. Means a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a peace that divides the spirit and the soul. It's a peace that divides your emotions and divides your spirit. You're in the midst of making a decision and don't make it unless you have peace. When am I going to have peace? Hey. The peace will come when you seek God and inquire God through your tribulation. Can you give an amen? So in the middle of all this situation, you got to really understand what God is trying to do. Many people don't understand that God has the answer to your to your problem. He has the answer. He has the solution. He has the solution. But the greatest thing, the big greatest problem that we have is that we don't seek of God. In other words, um, we become spiritually lazy to want to seek of God to get an understanding of God. I'm not talking about coming to church. I'm not talking about just praying or, you know, I read my little devotion that they sent you on the email and that was good enough for you. I'm not talking about that. Come on. I'm talking about seeking the word of God. Yes. Anybody can send you a little devotion and you can feel, oh my God, it was so good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Listen to me. Get out of that little good Come feeling on. thing. Why won't you go into the truth? What God is trying to do. You know why there's many marriages being broken, many relationships that are being broken. You know why many people are are falling today into this thyroid thing that they feel like they're very emotional up and down with this thyroid thing. You know why? Because the fact is, is that they don't know how to control the emotions. You have the power to control your emotions. You have the power to say no to yourself and say yes to what's right. Can you give an amen? amen? Have you ever seen somebody with a with that emotional problem? They'll turn on you from night to day. In the morning, they're good. By the time the night comes, boom, they're a different person. Why are you a different person? Hey. Well, the truth is, is that you have no substance inside of you. Anything can happen in that brain, and anything can take you off. Because anything can get you mad. And why? Because you have no substance. Come on. When you have no substance in God, there you God. are, spitting out things, saying things, that's it. I'm going to divorce you. I'm tired of this. I'm going to my mom's. I don't care for you. And then the next day, but you know I love you. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and tell them, who are you? Come on, tell somebody, who are you? Who are you? One day you're falling apart, the next day you're above. One day you're falling Part, the next day you're above. Who are you? Who are you inside of you? What is it that you're really trying to make happen? Are you trying to give people's attention by the fact of your bad behavior or your bad emotion? Mm. See, as a psychologist and able to be counseling a lot of people, especially marriages and youth, and, and one of the greatest problems that they have is that they allow their emotions to overtake. They allow their feelings to overtake their emotions. If they feel something right away, they want to act on it. They don't know how to tame their feelings. See, your feelings are not always right. That's right. <laughs> hey. That was good. That was good stuff, yeah. That was good. 
Okay, what'd you say? Oh, good. That's good. Your feelings are not always right. Well, it's simple, yeah. But you always think what you feel is right. Many people go live, live by their feelings. Live by their feelings. You living by your feelings, you're going to lead yourself to leading into the sense of the wrong decisions. You're always in your feelings. Feelings. No, I'm just What's that song? But the truth is, is this is, is that when you're in your feelings, what happens is that it leads you to bad emotions. Bad emotions leads you to wrong decisions. Wrong decisions allows you to have a bad character and a bad attitude. Why do you have your attitude? I don't know. Because nothing's working for you. You're miserable. God gives you everything. And you're still miserable. You ask God for this. You ask God for that. You ask God for that man. You ask God for that woman. And you're miserable. Mm. Every three weeks is like a big blow up. Big fight. And there you are. I don't want to talk to you for two weeks. And then three weeks later, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And here comes two months later. Boom! There you are loving. That's an emotional life and it's a reckless life. Come on. My friend, you're leading yourself to destruction. You're going to grow old and grouchy and mad on that couch. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you have no, no taming on your feelings. If you think it, you'll say it. You don't change anything you feel. You're looking at me like, I, I, oof, I can feel the fire in here. I can feel the fire. You're looking at me with fire. No, no, I'm just <laughs> so the truth is, is this, is that he says, but, uh, but, but be of what? Good cheer. Come on now. Be of what? Good cheer. Good cheer. You know what he's actually saying? He says, change your attitude. Come on. My peace changes your attitude. So, so when you're in the middle of your warfare in your mind, because attitude starts in your mind. That's Come on. right. They don't start in your situation. Nope. Any situation doesn't have the key to change who you are. You could go through hell and high water, and that situation won't change who you are. Your mind will change who you are in an instant. Thoughts will make you change right away. Thoughts will make you change to what you're not. He said, good cheer. be a good cheer. In other words, allow your character to understand that I am inside of you. Peace is with you. Peace is with you. Can you give an amen? Peace is with you. And when peace is with you, you change. You don't allow the circumstance to change you, but you allow your lifestyle, your manner of living to change the circumstance. Yes. So let me give you a scenario. You're at home. And somebody is grouchy. And somebody came in a bad mood. Oh, you got the phone call. Somebody's bad. In a bad mood. Uh, have you ever heard that before? No? Not in this church. Right before. <laughs> and you're like, and they respond and say, is, is dinner? It, and they say, hi, honey. Right? Right? The kids or whatever, right? They come in like, is dinner ready? <laughs> Who are you talking to? And it's like, it's like you get offended not understanding what's the situation. Many people don't stop and pay attention to what's happening. That sometimes a person is going through something not because they want to go through something. It's because all day they've been having a heavy thought life. Come on. And that makes them grouchy and frustrated. And sometimes the best thing to do is to... Lay hands on somebody, or let's, let's pray a little bit, or you know what, let's change the atmosphere here, or, or, or let's, let's, let me give you some words of encouragement in the midst of whatever's happening. Well, nothing's happening. Well, let me just give you the words anyways. <laughs> Shut up and take them, guys. Hey. Because things start changing. You got to change the atmosphere. See, your character with your attitude changes the atmosphere where you're at. Conviction. Right conviction leads you to change atmospheres. Man. When you have the conviction of peace, you know what conviction is? Conviction is leading yourself to have a thought to think twice about what you're going to do. Man. That's conviction. Thinking twice of what you're going to do. In your mind, you already have the story, and you're going to think twice before you do it. That's conviction. 
They're leaving. Uh, you know what? I'm going to wait. Let me wait on that. That's conviction. Condemnation leads you to be condemned about what you do. But conviction leads you to do the right thing in the midst of every situation. Many people don't understand that fact of that God has brought us a conviction that leads us to allow us to make the right decision. See, convictions changes the atmosphere. You don't join the atmosphere that there is. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody's mad here. Everybody's a party pooper here. You change the atmosphere. You're an atmosphere changer. You change the atmosphere of what's going on in, in that situation. Many people don't, don't like to change atmospheres. You know what they do? They stay isolated and they stay amongst that same atmosphere. Mm. And they allow that atmosphere to overtake them and they just join that atmosphere instead of being an atmosphere changer. Instead of start smiling and laughing and, and, and maybe say a joke that's not funny and they're going to laugh because it's not funny or, 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 or doing something that's going to attract somebody to open up hey. and to make something smile. Somebody smile. Can you give me an amen? Smile. Oh, come on now. Can you give me an amen? Yeah. See, God starts wanting to do something in your life. But God cannot do it unless you allow him to do it. Yeah. You're in charge of your life. The devil can't make you do anything. You choose to join the devil to do something. Come on. Yeah. You have the power. The devil don't have the power to do anything through you. You choose to want to do that. Hey. You choose. This is why the word of God says that today I said life or death before you. Choose life, he says. Choose life. You choose to be in that position. You choose to allow your emotions to take control of you. You choose to go ahead and be that person you want to be. You choose to do that. You got the choice to turn your position around. You got the choice. Come on now. You got the choice to say no to that area or that situation that's trying to attack you in your life. You got the choice. Well, that's why Romans 12, 2 tells us, tells us that by the renewing of our minds, we allow ourselves to start changing. Why did he say to renew? He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why did he say by the renewing of your mind? Because your emotions are led by your thoughts. You thought it, so that's why you're mad. You thought it, that's why you're doing what you're doing. It's your thoughts that allow you to move what you are. I'm preaching that better than you say amen. I know you're listening. So what happens is this renew your mind. The reason why he's saying renew your mind is because if you don't renew your mind, the negative situations in your life is going to take control of you. And then you start thinking these thoughts that are going to take you the wrong way. And then you're going to start pushing buttons that are not right. Come on now. Is there anybody in the house of God? So in this position and in this place, this is why Paul says, look at you got to renew your mind daily. When there's a situation, you got to take time to renew your mind. you got to let God start dealing with your mind. Because you're thinking, you're overthinking. Have you ever seen an overthinker? We don't have none here today, but there's overthinkers in this world. I pray we don't have none here, but if you are here, today is your last day to be an overthinker. You overthink it. It's like, dude, I didn't even think none of that. What are you talking about? Why well, I think this is, you just made up this story in your head because you're an overthinker. You just think it and think it and think it. You're in bed, you're still thinking. You got up and you're tired, but you're still thinking. Like, why are you thinking so much? You're thinking about your future. You're thinking about who I'm going to marry. You're thinking about what my, 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 my problems right now. You're thinking, and then, what about this? And what about this? And what do they say? And what do they think? And who do they think? And what, what do they think about us? And what, 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 what are they talking to me? They don't like me? Um, they, they must not like me. You just think a lot. Mom. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you really love me? Let me see. Tell me. Do you love me? Like, you thought of it for three days to tell him if he loves you or she loves you. And you constantly think and think and think and think and think. And the enemy constantly bombards your soul and your emotions. you know why people don't like to hear things like this? Because they feel like, don't let me in. Don't, don't come into my personal life. 
They want to hear a, a message that's not going to challenge their growth. Mm. Wow. I'm here. You're here today because God wants to challenge your growth. Nice. Some of you are very, well, just because you're a Christian, you say you go to church, doesn't mean you're living God's life. Doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Nice. Doesn't mean that. The Bible doesn't say that. If that was the case, churches would be really filled everywhere. All I need to do is go to my Sunday service. Church is for you to learn how to grow in your life. To make you grow. It's to challenge you to become better in life. Can you give an amen? Amen. To inspire you to become better for your family. To inspire you to become something in life. The word of God allows you to see things you can't see. The word of God allows you to be able to grow out of your life. See, some people, the biggest problem you have, the only problem you have, if you would just do this one thing, 70% of your problem will go away. Mm. And this is this one thing. Ready? You will learn how to study the Word of God. That's right. I'm not talking about reading it. Well, I read it from Genesis to Revelation. I know everything. So what? Ooh, you read it. Good boy. Is that what I'm talking about? talking about studying the Word of God. Because the Word of God gives you nurture. It nurtures your soul. It changes your mind. It nurtures your heart. It transforms you. It makes you into a different, better person. Amen. How many want to be better, not bitter? Amen. Come on now. How many want to be better? Amen. You want to turn your bitterness into betterness. Can you give yeah, an amen? amen? Can you give an amen? Come on, give the Lord a clap offering in this place. God wants to do something. Ooh, hallelujah. Change your manner of living. Change your manner of thinking. How do you see your situations? When you see something negative, what's the first thing you think? About the negative? Or do you see that God's doing something in the midst of this negative situation? What do you see? Can you see something new? God wants to take you from one place to the next. God wants to open up new avenues and new things in your life. But the truth is, is that negative emotions will come and distract you from God's plan. You said that morning, that's it. I'm going to get up and I'm going to start studying the word of God. And all of a sudden, they wake you up with a problem. Uh You get distracted and there goes your plan. My friend, you got to stay on track. You got to see this through. You gotta say, listen to me, at this point of my life, I need this breakthrough because if not, I'm gonna lose it all. Yes. I'm about to lose my marriage, my relationships, I'm about to lose my mind. So at this moment of my life, I need something more than just my daily routine. I need to open up the Word of God and start learning the Word of God. Amen. Can you give an amen? amen? People that pray and not know the Word of God, my friend, you're praying with no substance. Wow. It's the word of God that leads you to prayer. It's the word of God that leads you into intercession. It is the word of God that leads you to pray right. Nice. To be able to speak to God right. It is the word of God. If you ask people, how many people here will be able, are, are able or do uh, get up in the morning and see God? You'll be surprised that probably three quarters of the congregation probably don't do it. Wow. Come on. And the reason why is because they come to church to get their fix. See, Wednesdays is just a fix. It's not your life. It's a lifestyle to live the word. It's a lifestyle to get up. It's a lifestyle to seek of the Lord. Come on now. It's a lifestyle. And some people don't understand that. They think that the, that the life of Christianity is just to be faithful to come to church. There's thousands that come to church. If the Bible says that even the demons believe. And tremble. Even the demons believe. My friend, believing, begin not producing the fruit in your life will not take you where you want to be. Starting a business, you're starting something in life. My friend, I'm gonna tell you right now, when you get a hold of God and you found yourself in the things of God, which is learning the word of God, I promise you that as soon as you start doing that, all hell will break you for at least two weeks. But you continue. You persist. 
You continue. You continue. Come on, look at somebody say continue. Even though you get distracted, continue. Even though all hell broke loose, continue. Continue. God's going to see you through whatever you're going through. Can you give an amen? He's a good God. He's a powerful God. He's willing to take you from one location to the next location, to the next glory, to the next glory, to the next glory of your life. If you're willing to allow him to be God in your life, he's going to take you from place to place. Took you five years, God could take you in weeks. Right. Amen. And sometimes we can't see beyond that. In Colossians three fifteen, in the uh, let's go to the New King James and then the Amplified Bible. Look at what it says here. He says, Colossians three fifteen says. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily with him. Did you hear what I just said? Uh, Did you hear what we just read? Yes. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily with him. Right. So this peace that I'm talking about, you must learn how to walk daily in him. Be the, be the controlling factor in your hearts. Why your hearts? Because your heart is where actions are. Hey, that's right. Have you ever heard something somebody tell you that? Like, oh, you had that in your heart. Yeah. That's why you did that. That's right. Well, the heart is the why you do make actions. The reason why you did what you did because it's in your heart. So he says, let me control your heart. The deciding and settling questions that arises. Deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you were called as, as, Members. as, Members. as, Members. as, Members. in one body of believers, and be thankful to God always. Amen. Can you give an amen? amen? Can you give an amen? amen. All right. So here he says. Go ahead and take this and let your daily life allow God to lead your heart, your mind. Why are you upset of what you're going through? You know why you're upset? Because you allowed your feelings to take you and allow your mind to start thinking things that are not of God. It took you to a whole different level. The problem was this big, but you took it this big. Because all you had to do is use God in the midst and the problem would have stood that small and it could be conquered within like minutes. If you allow this problem to take you from 24 hours to 48 hours to 72 hours, and now you're there, you, the problem continues, and all of a sudden, finally, you come and say, okay, I surrender. I don't want to fight like this no more. Well, why does it take you that long to settle a problem? Why did you, are you afraid to confront the situations that you need to fix in your life? Well, I'm telling you right now. Fear comes into your emotions to isolate yourself because the fact is the enemy tells you you're going to say something wrong to them, you're going to offend them, and the enemy starts putting all this junk and empowers you not to confront nothing and lets you to leave back. I'm not going to tell my wife because we're going to just start a big problem. And everybody's silent in the marriage. Everybody's silent in the relationship. I'm not going to say nothing because it's going to just cause, so you stay quiet. And you stay quiet again. And you stay, hey, see, staying quiet is like yeast, like bread. Eat a lot of bread and you just get inflated. And you get inflated. By the time you know it, you're at a weight that you never saw it coming. Yeah. Why? Because you've been eating a bunch of yeast, a bunch of bread that's leaving a bunch of negativity, a bunch of junk that you're just filled up, filled up. By the time you know it, there's nothing in there. There's no substance. All it is is yeast. But the truth is, is that one of these days you're going to get inflated and you're going to start saying all this junk because you've been holding it. You've been holding it and holding it. Why? Because you can't say nothing. Because if you say something, well, someone's going to get mad. No, my friend. If you learn how to say things, God gets the glory. Nice. If you learn how to use God in the midst of it, God gets the glory. You still will get what you want to let out, but you'll do it in God's way. Nice. God will get the glory. Can you give an amen? Nice. And this is the peace that leads us when you learn how to talk right, learn how to act right, not get mad and blow up right away. Can you give an amen? Learn how to lead your life in Christ, not lead your life by your feelings. Amen. That was good. 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 Yeah, come on, get a word of clap offering. Yeah, thank you for that. 
understand this, that when we start learning how to take God, and he starts learning how to start mobilizing God within you, it's going to take some time. Remember, don't get frustrated because you don't feel like God is not working inside of you. Listen to me. God inside of you, it takes time. It don't go from day to night. It takes time. It takes conquering one situation at a time. Man. Some people want to conquer things, three, four things at one time. Listen to me. One day at a time. One situation at a time. They might come all at one time. But you pick the biggest one and knock him out and the little one will fall. Hey. Thank you, amen, amen. You got to learn that the truth is, is that don't be afraid to take care of problems, but at the same time, don't let problems overwhelm you. Problems will always overwhelm you if you don't know how to take care of them one at a time. You'll call, the kids are wanting money, your wife, the pg &E, the house, the job, whatever and ever and ever we could say, we could be here all day talking about the things that just come forth. And the truth is, is that you got to learn how to take care of one situation at a time. Emotions will try to get you to take care of all of them because you're trying to seek peace. But the peace that you're seeking is a man peace, not a God peace. Hey. A God peace will give you patience to take care of problems. Amen. Okay. So you understand this, God's peace will allow you to have patience. Patience allows you to think right before you speak. Look at your neighbor and tell them, be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. That's one of the biggest things that I deal with sometimes, is patience. Patient. Just cut it off. <laughs> and there you are, trying to cut it off, but the, the thing is, you can't just cut it off that easy. You got to be strategic in how you cut things off and how you deal with situations. Man. You can't just come and go on your feelings to speak about it. But you got to learn how to be patient. You speak, 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 but you don't allow God to speak for you. Mm, wow. See, sometimes your words is not what God wants you to speak. Come on. Sometimes you need to learn how to be patient so God can give you wisdom to speak the right words. Amen. Can you give an amen? amen? Is there anybody in the house of God? Is there anybody in the house of God? God is good. This is a good preaching. This is a good preaching. I like this preaching. In 2 Corinthians 13, 11, the word of God reads like this. 2 Corinthians 13, 11, the word of God reads like this. Finally, brethren, farewell, go to the Amplified. He says, finally, believers, rejoice. Be made complete. Be what you should be. Hmm. What an interesting, interesting statement. He says, be what you should be, not what they want you to be. Hey. Come on. Oh, man. He says, be what you should be, be comforted, be like-minded, live in. Live in. Live in. Live in. Peace. Live in peace. Enjoy the spiritual well-being experienced by believers who walk closely with God. Enjoy your fellowship. Enjoy people. Why do they have live in peace and then joy? The reason why? Because joy and peace go together. Peace is the substance of joy. Joy comes when peace has settled in. I have peace with it. May the Lord be the Lord. All is well. Come on, look at somebody. Tell them all is well. All is well. All is well. When God is in the midst, my friend, you might not understand it, but God is closely with you. And the God of love and peace. The God of love and peace. Come on, repeat it. It's okay because you never repeat the word anyway, so might as well repeat it here right now. It's a good thing for you to repeat it right here. That's why I have people repeat it. It gets on my nerves. I know. Everything gets on your nerves that has to do with the word of God. But the truth is, is that if you learn how to repeat things, things start living in your life. Learn how to say love and peace. We should make a show how huh? it says love and peace. Love and peace. <laughs> And then he says, the, the source of loving kindness will be with you. The source of loving kindness will be with you. 
the source of loving kindness will be with you. My friend, today, what is your source? Who is your source? Who's motivating you? Is it your ambitions in life? Or is it God motivating you? If it's your ambitions, you're going to get tired. You're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to get tired of this fact of that this body is going to get worn down because of age. But if it's God's source, if it's love and peace, if it's peace and love, then the peace and love of God will come over your life. And God's love will start motivating you in the midst of your destruction, in the midst of your dysfunctions, in the midst of everything you're going through. His love and His peace will abound in your life to empower you to move you from one place to the next. Amen. Can you give me an amen? amen? I love the Word of God. I love the Word of God. See, life is like music. Life is like music. I want you to play me an upbeat song, right? I mean, uh, upbeat, maybe some revival right there. Just some revival. Maybe some drums right there where you're at. Do you know how to play the drums? Hey. Uh, what does this make you do? See, some of you shaking your knees already. I see a lot of you going. And sometimes emotions is like a beat of a song. Sometimes you have a good day and everything's like up and yes, yes, honey. Let's go. Let's go to Walmart. Let's go. And one day all of a sudden, <laughs> no, I'm going through it. Leave me alone. And you see this. I want to say something about that. <laughs> and it's just a sad song for you. Like, oh, it's just a gloomy day. I don't know what's going on with me. Come on, come on, come on. And then you start singing. Oh, poor me. And you start singing to yourself. Because nobody understands you. Because nobody cares for you. Nobody. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah! Where's Jerry when I need him? He's at Phoenix. And sometimes nobody understands you. Where's Sarah? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Match this song. Well, what? You don't love me no more? 
<laughs> get offended right away because somebody's telling you the truth about yourself. Why do you get offended about it? Well, who told them about my life? Nobody did. Nobody did. There's one that told me about your life and he's living inside of you. It's called the Holy Spirit. People accuse me of that all the time. They say, somebody told you what's going on with me, huh? Uh, no. You constantly think that somebody's not, well, the reason why is because they're trying to blame somebody. They don't want to be challenged to get out of that nest. And then, oh, you could become such an awesome person, mm. such an awesome wife, such an awesome husband, such an awesome family. But you know what's holding you back? Your feelings. You know what's holding you back? Your manner, your ethics of life. You explode right away. You get mad right away. You don't represent yourself right before mine. Hmm. Well, it's his fault. His fault. It's his fault. It's his fault. If he would change this, and look at him, and look at him. When you're always blaming somebody, remember, remember, the problem is not the person you're blaming, but it's the challenge that God's trying to give you to change. That's right. Amen. That was good. That's Instagram stuff right there. So if you're up, me. I love you, honey. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Uppy. You did this. The slow beat. I'm a love beat. Come on. Uppy. Come on. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Brother. Come on. Hit it. Give me some. Get the guitar or the bass. Get the, the guitar. Come on. Hit it. Ready? Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Forget you, but I still love you. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. We mis mistreat each other every day, but somehow I will leave you. What is that? Love conquers multitudes of sins, my friends. Yeah. Love will conquer. If it's a true relationship, and it's a true thing, then love conquers. Sooner or later, those things have to go away because your emotional life is allowing me not to leave my life with God. Man. It's distracting me. It's taking me away. Mom. Listen. See, worship allows me to end 
enter into a place in my soul. It cracks the thoughts in my mind and it allows the presence of God to grow through me. That's what worship is. See, worship is not just a song that you want to sing. Worship is a, an experience that you feel to allow the blessing of God, the spirit of God, the, the glowing of God to break through those situations in your life. Why don't you raise your hands? Well, we raise our hands because of the fact that, that we're just, it's, it's a statement. The word of God says after the cross that they, that they were raising their hands. How they raise their hands? Well, it's a, it's a sign of surrender. God, here I am. I surrender my life to you. I'm in this situation of my life and I need a breakthrough. So worship starts allowing you to take control of whatever you're going through and empowers you to change when you leave this door. I came in moody. I'm going to leave you with a smile. That's right. That's right. Same problem. Same attitude problem. Same situation. But you're leaving encouraged. You're leaving with an encouragement saying, I'm leaving here saying, God is with me. I, I have power to tame my emotions. I have power to tame my mouth. I have power to tame my thoughts. I, 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 I learn through the word of God. Can you give me an amen? As we sing this song, you're invited to come to the altar or you're able to be at your chairs. Whatever you want. Then I want you to just go in and let worship 